Well, hello and welcome everyone. Today's conversation is going to be about finding moments of joy and sorry, not joy, awe. And I'm really grateful that Graham Gerstenberg, our CEO and my partner in crime is also joining us. Now he's just come straight out of a workshop. So um, yeah, <laughs> welcome. So what we're going to be covering in this session is what is awe? Why is it important? And then what are some ways that you can go about finding awe? Um, so really curious, and, and Graham, I'll obviously start with you. What does awe mean to you? Great question. Um, thank you for having uh, me on the call today. And I think we're being joined by Jez. Oh, Jez, welcome. with us momentarily hopefully hey jess uh or oh, what a wonderful wonderful word so when i think of um experiencing moments of awe it's it's both a disconnection and a connection which is nice. really weird so let me explain it so the disconnection is i find um, one of the things that creates awe for me or when I'm experiencing awe, it's, it's a disconnection from a lot of the things that I'm normally paying attention to. And it's connecting with something that is much, much bigger than me. Mm, I love that. Much. Um, yeah. So it's, it's almost... Um, if I sort of went for the hyperbole, it is almost like feeling connected to the universe. Mm. But it's definitely that that sense of, yes, it's much, much bigger than me, but I'm connected to it. I'm part of it. It's, it's amazing. I love it. Mm. Great question. Great question. Um, Jez, did you want to share what all means to you, if you can open your mic? And you may not be able to. I'll just check in. Hello? Out. Oh, hello. There he is. Hey, Jess. Hey. Hey, sorry. I'm, um, I'll am i be properly joining you guys in about two minutes. We just had a quick plumbing emergency that I was dealing with. <laughs> oh, no. So I'll, I'll be properly engaged in about two minutes. Sorry. No problem. All right. Well, you go do that and then come back in. <laughs> so um, for me, I, I think earlier this week, there was a, an amazing storm that went past us and went over the top of us. And I was sitting at the on the back veranda and just watched the the clouds change color so they went from you know blue sky with a couple of white puffy clouds to this on the horizon I could see these dark storm clouds rolling in and then I could hear a bit of thunder and the it was coming on to dusk so I yeah. took my camera outside and I started taking photos because there's lots of yellow and green around us at the moment. It's canola crops, beautiful green grass, daisies in the in the paddocks. And I was just snapping all these amazing photos of this dark clouds coming in. And then in the distance, I could hear that rolling thunder. And then I came inside, sat down, and over in the sort of far southeast, I saw a beautiful big rainbow. And so I went out, I was like, oh, this is just amazing. And then it all, the clouds came right over the top of us and it started raining. And we live with a house with a tin roof. And just listening to that, all of that, I just felt, like Graham said, just part of the universe. It was just, everything was so magic. It was so much bigger than me. And, and I really love, I, I looked up the definition of awe for this particular session. And the Oxford Language Dictionary uh, defines it as a feeling of reverential respect mixed with fear or wonder. And that's really what I felt when that storm was rolling in. It was just magical. Yeah, I, I love that as a definition. Um, because I, I guess, yeah, the fear thing is really interesting. So we can, certainly can experience a moment of awe which is you know not in a good way but uh, I certainly much prefer to think about the um that just feeling of wonder um and one other example uh because I, I agree that yeah the photos you took of the storm um and I love 
oh, it's just I love nature. And I'm so grateful that we we can experience it every day. That we're not you know stuck in the middle of a of a concrete jungle, but just looking at the difference in colours, yeah, you know, that really deep deep grey, almost heading towards black of the clouds, and then a lighter grey around it, and, and uh, yeah, it's it's fantastic. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? It is. Yeah. So for me, I often think of nature when I think of awe and. So as always, I love to acknowledge Unsplash as a website where they provide beautiful photos for free. And this photo um, was done by Lucas Marcomini. I hope I've said his name correctly. Such a beautiful thing. So the, the green night skies. Now, I've never actually experienced it in person, but even just this amazing photo shows something that makes me feel awe. Um, I wanted to share some studies that um, around or if, if that's okay, and then, then we'll, we'll ask another question. Sure. And, and this, um, first of all, is by Keltner and Haig. And um, they talk about all consists of two qualities. The first one is perceived vastness. So something that we think to be greater than ourselves. And the second one is accommodation. So a need to assimilate the experience of the vastness into our own current mental structure. So they talk about awe is an emotion in the upper reaches of pleasure and on the boundary of fear. So sometimes when you're in a big storm, it's amazing. It is awesome, but it's also when the thunder's rumbling, it can yep. actually be quite scary as well. Um, and, and I like to think about, and again, um, a number of these come from um, the Greater Good Science Centre at Berkeley, where um, Kelter actually comes from. It's Dasha Kelter is the gentleman's name. And the things they talk about, the benefits of awe, it makes us more generous because we perceive that we are far smaller when we're experiencing awe than we generally think about ourselves. So it, it makes us more humble. Um, it tends to focus us on our purpose. It definitely, when you're sitting watching or you're more present, it slows down time. And um, some really beautiful things, um, apparently it decreases inflammation in our body. And I assume that's because of all the beautiful feel-good chemicals that go through our bloodstream. It improves things such as our creativity. And um, it's actually apparently really good for our central nervous system. So it's good for our physical and also our mental health. Um, from Wharton Business School, um, some of the other things, or just sorry, Wharton University, it helps us make better decisions because again, it slows us down. It helps us be more cooperative and connect better. It increases our patience. And the last one that I really enjoyed, it moves us from self-interest to interest in others. others. Mm. Mm, love that. Yeah. So the next question I had, and I really love your insights, Graham, and then we'll go to Jez on this one, is you know, where do you get your awe? Uh, well, I was I was going to attempt to be humorous and say Bunnings, um, but that's probably <laughs> the least least likely source of it, certainly for me uh, on planet Earth. Um, it's everywhere. Actually, sorry, that's a terrible um, answer to it. What's a really good question? It is everywhere. How do I get it? How do I access or by disconnecting from everything else? So, you know, um, we were talking a, a couple of minutes ago about the storm that came over and then the rainbow was out there. And, and I was thinking, how many times have we seen a rainbow in the sky and thought, oh, rainbow, and then just gone on with whatever we were doing, as opposed to disconnecting from everything else that we were doing and looking and thinking, oh, wow, yeah, how amazing is it mm. to be able to see a rainbow? And just stopping and, and connecting with that um, or just paying attention to the storm clouds coming over and rather than saying, oh, it's raining again, it's going to get cold. Yeah. Um, and then just going on with whatever I was doing. It's just, again, disconnecting, stopping 
and and reconnecting with the magic of mm. planet Earth. That's me. Nice. Jeremy, oh, Jez, are you back, darling? Yep, yeah, yeah, um, all good. Um, yeah, I actually really agree with what Graham was saying. Um, I, I think I think it's it's really, it's, it's stuff that sometimes you see every day, but uh, when you actually stop and give it a moment, it can really create a powerful sense of, of something, even something like when I look at uh, like our pea plant, um, it's amazing to see sort of what when that started as a seed, what it is now, where we can basically have it for dinner, you know, like it would be a whole dinner if we wanted to. Um, just really like that in of itself doesn't sound that interesting, but when you look at it and you actually stop to appreciate it, it is actually pretty amazing. Mm. Um, yeah, so I, I think I'm totally on board with what Graham's talking about, just really stopping and giving yourself the time to absorb it because it's a lot because there's a lot of the world I think that's really beyond uh our power like we kind of like that's way more powerful than us and we forget that sometimes i think but it's yeah because even like we have a beehive that i'm looking at right now and it's amazing to see how many bees are in there i saw it's somewhere between twenty thousand and eighty thousand. so you know if i bumped into it i'm a goner but uh, at the same time it's a really calm and peaceful thing and they're making honey so it's yeah and th that's quite awe-inspiring yeah love that's it. magical isn't love it, it. <laughs> um couple of areas on on top of this um that i get all from so nature obviously um people so just when people are generous when they're kind um and we're going to talk about some people that i think of um you know people i admire that that really helps and and one which i know both graham and jez love is music so beautiful music actually for me creates or i think of katie lang when she sings hallelujah and I get teary just even thinking of it because she's just got this beautiful voice and the words, um, and I think it was Leonard Cohen actually wrote the song. Yeah, it was. Um, just stunning. Like for me, it just stops me in my tracks and, and brings me back to the present. I just wanted to share um, something that Dasha Kelter talked about. Um, and again, he's from the Berkeley um, Greater Good Science Centre. And he's, I love this quote, don't estimate the power, sorry, don't underestimate the power of goosebumps. Mm. And when I think about awe, that's that's what you tend to get with yep. um, awe. So like beautiful that. one. Did you know, and this is just fun facts, that um, the physical expression of joy, uh, of, of awe is we drop our jaw, we raise our eyebrows and we look upwards. So we're like, and it's just that because it's bigger than us and the the common words we use with all sorry with yeah with all jez graham do you want to have a guess what the common words are what is one of uh, miss miller's favorite words wow <laughs> yeah i was gonna say wow well. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one is ah yeah that's nice yeah nice and you know the, those emotions that all bring up are actually just really beautiful so the next slide, um, again from Unsplash, and what an amazing photo. Just this person standing up watching and looking at the night sky just is so beautiful, which is why I picked it. I just thought this is just a gorgeous photo. So let's now talk about finding moments of joy. So some of the things I wrote about, you know, talking to people, and this is where I wanted to share that, yeah, when someone's kind or they're generous and we see that we that actually is a mini burst of of all and nature we've spoken about but i was thinking about two people that i admire who have loved nature for a really long time and one is jane goddall or goodall Good who yep. who for over 60 years has worked to tirelessly to make sure that chimpanzees don't um, die out that they thrive and the other one um, is um, David Attenborough, who, um, and so I should tell you, Jane God Goodall is um, 87 years old. David Attenborough is 95 years old. And every time I watch one of his series, I always feel awe. And I look at both of them and they're still quite sprightly. And I, I wonder whether, you know, they've connected their passion, they're doing something with nature, and that's actually helped them 
you know, be much younger yep. because of that all that they're experiencing all the time. Anyway, happy to open it up to both you and Jez, some ideas around some of these topics, plus more for all. Where would yeah. we find it? Jez, love to hear your thoughts. Sure. Well, I mean, actually, when you were talking, I think uh, I, I think some of it is definitely sort of that uh, sitting back and sort of seeing uh, things done that you can't possibly create or things that are done to a really good uh, degree. For some reason, uh, I was thinking of, uh, and you guys will both know this, the uh, Ken Robinson TED Talks. Mm -hmm. I find them quite awe-inspiring because yes. of it's, in my mind, a really perfect uh, public speaking display of giving information, being funny, being relatable, being interesting, yeah. uh, where you're constantly learning stuff. And uh, as you were talking about Attenborough and good old mum, that was uh, someone that came to mind. Uh, that's also something that I'm fascinated by, public speaking. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's it, it's I, it was sort of what Graham was talking about before, about it, it tapping into something a lot deeper uh, I, I definitely think it's that's part of it, and that that is in art as well. When you watch something, and maybe you realize when you rewatch it, uh, there's some extra meaning, and it makes the movie twice as good or whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I or you know, music that can inspire groups of people to do things is pretty interesting as a concept. And yes. uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know. I just yeah, I, I definitely find it sort of a it's like a powerlessness, but in a positive way that you're sort of um, releasing some sort of like built up anxiety and just uh, absorbing kind of the art or the, the scene or whatever. Mm, almost like, that. yeah, almost like a surrender, Jess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly, that's a much better yeah. way of saying it. <laughs> yes. Thank yeah. you. I love that. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Um, I, I, yeah, one thought that came to me a minute ago, um, just looking at the first two dot points on this thing, people in nature uh, is that we are nature. Mm. we spend so much time sort of separating ourselves and we think about it. I mean, I do this as well. I think about mother nature and I talk about nature and then I think, oh, hang on, that's me. So for me, yeah, I, I love being in nature because it's just a reconnection. It's like going home. It's like, that's where I came from. Um, the, the art piece, uh, you know, as a species, we are capable of producing incredible things. Yeah, you know, or inspiring things in, in terms of art. And I, you know, I have a, a love of language and some of the, the poetry that I've, I've experienced and stories that people have, um, you know, where they put pen to paper, it's just amazing. And music for me, hands down, uh, other than being in nature, just music is one thing that um, has always and probably always will generate a sense of awe in me. But the other thing I wanted to say really quickly, if I can, is yeah, when we think about people who inspire and, and you know, people like Jane Goodall, David Attenborough, um, Ken Robinson, I mean, there's so, such incredible human beings out there. And, but I wonder whether sometimes we, we miss opportunities to experience or because we put people up on a pedestal and think, well, I'll never get there, but it's great to experience you know, what they have achieved can I experience or just by connecting with somebody much more ordinary? And for me, I think the answer to that is absolutely yes. But we tend to, because we tend to pay more attention to people who are famous or successful or whatever, we, I think, miss opportunities to experience or with those around us. Um, yeah, my favourite example of awe in terms of human beings at the moment, other than Danette, of course, is, is our granddaughter, Miller who's not long term too, but, and just watching uh, the development of another human being. And yeah, of course I'm biased because she's our granddaughter, but it doesn't change what's happening there. So that's mm -hmm. me, so many opportunities. But, and I just wanted to j jump in just quickly, Graham, because you've actually reminded me of something uh, as you're talking, which is that I've been watching this uh, Stanford lectured series on sort of like neurobiology. Yep. And they were saying, and I think humans can actually have some very unique experiences because where, you know, you hear that thing that we're 98% the DNA is shared with a chimp, which is true, but um, we have a very different uh, communication center in our brain. The, that gene is really different than all other animals. And that's yep. kind of why we can talk and that's why we can absorb stuff. But it also gives us the opportunity to absorb communication in a really powerful way. 
um, yes. which is you yeah. know, which is pretty cool. It's a sort of only human experience, but it's mm. uh, yeah, quite powerful. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Jess. Mm, I love that. Yeah, I, I was going to add, we all should also sometimes be in awe of ourselves because there'll be stuff we create when we're present. Um, and whether it's a conversation, um, Jez does stand-up comedy, both Jer Jeremy and Graham play music. In those instances where we're just fully present and, and creating stuff, we should remind ourselves that that you know, is all for ourselves. And also that those listening or, or observing are also possibly feeling some awe as well. So this is where... Um, we spoke last week on the podcast about Marianne Williamson's Our Deepest Fear and, and you know, giving ourselves permission to shine. And I think it's really important when we shine, not in an egotistical, arrogant way, but actually just being present in what we love doing, it actually helps others also experience awe. Yep. Some some little things that I also, because I'm thinking now, how do we share your know, little things that people can do to build awe into their lives? And you've shared both of you some really good, you know, lovely ways of doing it. Um, on, I think it was Wednesday, I was on Facebook and Gino's, our fruit and veggie supplier, they posted photos of just beautiful, um, and I think I'm probably going to say the name wrong, Runcular um flowers and they're just these beautiful colorful flowers anyway as soon as I saw that I was like wow and so I went yeah and Graham's got some and there's some on our back table as well how beautiful are they they're just even flowers can give us or as Jez said you're know, watching the pea plant grow from from a little seed to where it is now yep. I love watching the sunrise and the sunset that for me sets my body clock but it also just I'm always in awe of the colours that happen in the sky. Standing out at night, just watching the night sky because we've got no lights around us. And one experience that we had when we were up in the Torres Strait Island, um, and in fact, Jez was there with Graham and I, as was Kanika and Ingrid as well, was um, just floating in the lagoon on Friday, Friday Island and just having nothing other than nature around us the water was crystal clear that for me was just was amazing so there's some simple things that i think of that that bring all yep Any yeah also other? yeah, yeah well, i was gonna say even on when we were on thursday island another really awe-inspiring moment was seeing the bats wake up at, oh, um, yeah at sunset and being yep. just overwhelmed by what seemed like hundreds of thousands of bats all leaving at the same time yep. yes and how quiet they were but how amazing it was as they filled up the sky absolutely yeah that yeah. was awesome yes so i think um yeah one of the challenges at the moment for a lot of people um not just in australia but for many of us at the moment we don't all have um the the blessing or the the you know the, the luck to be living in the middle of nature uh, or in the middle of nowhere where you can go outside and there's no other buildings around and no other people and you can just connect with that. So, and I, and I know I want to acknowledge that there are a lot of people at the moment who are in lockdown of one form or another who live in the middle of cities and it's not always easy or at the moment sometimes not even legal to be able to get out and go for a drive 20 minutes or an hour into the countryside and just spend time in nature. And whilst it is possible for us to experience or by disconnecting from technology. I think one of the important things for us to keep in mind at the moment is that technology can actually also enable us to experience awe. And, and I know there's uh, you know, there are some amazing videos on YouTube of nature uh, where somebody has, has had the, um, the caring, um, the compassion to go into a rainforest and set up a video and just film a stream you know, trickling down through the rainforest and there's no other human being around. So you just get the sounds of nature and there's birds. So just engaging with something like that for you know, 15 or 20 minutes, disconnect from everything else and just watch and listen to that. Um, Jess, talking about your pea plant before, reminded me that a, a month or so ago, I shared, um, we were having a similar conversation in our team 
And I found a video on YouTube. So it was a time lapse video of, and I, I think it was a pea plant or a bean plant, literally going from seed to a real plant over 28 day period. Uh, the video itself runs for about maybe 10 minutes. And it's absolutely astonishing. So they've got a, you know, soil in a glass container or a perspex container, so you can literally see through. You can watch this seed grow and send its roots down. And it's, it's absolutely astonishing. So even if we can't get out into nature, you can still experience it. And I think that's really important for people to keep in mind at the moment. Awesome. Jez, did you have anything to add? Uh, no, I think Graham makes a really good point. And just with, you know, technology getting better and us being able to see nature at different time scales, whether it's slowing nature right down and you get to see how fast a hummingbird's wings are going, or as Graham's saying, watching a plant grow in 10 minutes, you really do get to appreciate all the, uh, the amazing forces that are sort of around you. Mm, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, one thing, even if you're in an apartment, you know, looking at, um, you know, if, can you get a pot plant inside? Can you get a, a bunch of flowers yep. or something yep. to just brighten it up a bit? So question for both of you, and, and to give you a little bit of prep and preparation time, I'll share my answers first. I'd love for you to share a movie that um, gives you a sense of awe and also some music that gives you a sense of awe. And if there's a poem or a book or something, also that. Um, and I'm also going to share a flower that gives me a sense of awe. So I love looking at sunflowers, just that beautiful, bright yellow. My movie for awe is August Rush, uh, which is just a fabulous, fabulous, particularly the, the boys' interpretation of music through what nature does, like fields moving and yep. stuff like that. And I already spoke about my favourite um, awe song, which is Hallelujah by K.D. Lang. Just one other side I'd love to share. In terms of art, there is a kinetic artist who does um, wind sculptures called Anthony Howe, H-O-W-E. If you get a chance, look at his YouTube videos of the sculptures he makes. They just are awesome um, and or inspiring. Great word. Awesome. <laughs> so, um, Jez, do you want to share the your favourites? Sure. Well, uh, I think mine is for some slightly different reasons, but uh, um, we actually recently re-watched Pirates of the Caribbean 1 and 2. And what's interesting is I think uh, even though they're uh, big blockbusters and so we typically nowadays associate that with sort of weaker plot and really good CGI, uh, these films are actually really, like, really well made. The Pirates of the Caribbean movies, if you rewatch them, the music's beautiful, the acting's awesome, and there's a lot of really fun stuff in them. Uh, and so for me, it was actually really exciting watching them again because it's there's movies that aren't made like that really anymore. Uh, and so I, th yeah. I actually found it really like a like it's funny. There's a lot of action. There's a bit of horror. It's a bit of everything. So uh, just in terms of uh, like an art being refined at a blockbuster level, that was for me actually quite inspiring. I, I thought, um, nice. yeah. What and, about music? Uh, music. Uh, I mean, I like um, I like a lot of live albums for this nice. reason because you get to see, especially when they start mixing up the music. I um, who did I listen to recently? I think I listened to a live Santana album, and they uh, and nice. it's fun because they have such a big band um, that they give them different uh, opportunities to shine, and I think it's. Just, it's just fun because that that's sort of the uh, inspiration you sort of see at a like TED talk for me. It's the same kind of thing with a live album where you kind of get to feel the crowd as well as part of it. And it's a performance for a crowd, which I think is slightly different. But yeah, I mean, those two for me at the moment are some that I'm liking. Nice. nice. Excellent. Graham? Um, movies is tricky because I was thinking, oh. So the, the, probably the, the easy one for me would be Lord of the Rings. Uh, but partly because of the book behind it. So if I think about stories, like particularly art, um, the, the book or books um, blew me away. And it's still hands down my all time favorite thing ever in terms of written art. Um, T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland in poetry. Um, music, <laughs> such a, uh, I, I've started um, uh, a, 
music theory course because I, I've played music and love music for a long time, but never really properly understood it. So it's giving me a new appreciation of the classics and, and the classical composers. Uh, listening to a symphony, but now understanding uh, what was required to actually put that together and, and write the score in the first place. Any of that stuff is just phenomenal. Random song, Worlds on Fire by the Butterfly Effect, an Australian band. Um, same deal. Actually, and I've just so remembered many things. Tommy Emmanuel. Yep. I, I was actually going to say, uh, Tommy and two other classical guitarists, can't remember who they were, played, uh, did a, a cover version of Sultans of Swing. The Die nice. Straight song, yeah, amazing. So much, there's so much. And and one last um, thing that I got from um, Wharton work, which is a, a little uh, newsletter type thing, and they were talking about awe. And um, they said in the workplace we should share our experiences of awe, just because of the connection. Just like this conversation today, yeah, yeah. you feel better after talking about awe, which I really like. Now, we're coming to the end, so, you know, here's something that can just create all just a, a nice little simple bunch of flowers. And for all of us, you know, this is a really important topic because everyone is feeling a bit blur. And in fact, I, today I was listening to a podcast between Brene Brown and Amy Cuddy around um, how people are really not feeling great because the pandemic sort of in the US looked like it was ending and then Delta came in and it, it all went to pot basically. And it reminded me of the importance of reflection and connection. So sharing your awe stories with one another, you know, coming up with some ideas about how you can create more awe in your life, I think is really important. And these questions are beautiful to help you sort of focus on, you know, what could I keep doing to keep awe in my life? What might I start doing because it's going to bring more awe into my life? And what are some of the things I might want to stop doing? Because actually they're, they're stopping me from missing what is awesome out there. Now, I'd love to thank Graham and Jeremy for joining me today in the conversation. I also wanted to share next week, I'm sort of keeping the theme for next week. Next week, we're actually going to talk about the power of music and how oh, nice. it creates connection and a whole stack of other amazing science around um, music. And the week after that, we're going to talk about self-confidence on our conversation. So that'll be on the 30th of September. Um, so I look forward to um, seeing a number of you next week on the 23rd of September at 12.30 sorry, 12.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Um, and obviously we do our green room Spotify, um, sorry, Spotify green room on Fridays at 12.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time as well. So please come and join us. We love to have these conversations with people live. And once again, can I thank Graham and Jez so much for joining me in today's conversation. Uh, yeah, thanks, Jez. Been a pleasure being part of it. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you both so much. This has been a really good chat. Have a magical afternoon, everyone. Have an awe-inspiring afternoon. Oh, I See like you. that. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.